Okay, guys, how are you doing this morning? Um, apparently, we have someone from Germany listening. Hey, how are you doing this morning, buddy? Um, it's kind of weird. The internet fucks me up, man. Anyways, uh, let's roll. Buckle up, boys. I'm driving. Well, today we're going to have some stories about some crazy women. As you imagine, I've probably met a few in my life. <laughs> Well, this one girl I used to live with, <coughs> rest in peace, dear. <coughs> she was a waitress all the time, so I was always in the bar with her. Man, she's the only girl I ever fucking backhanded. And I know you're going to say, oh, I hit a woman. Well, she was pointing a fucking shotgun at me, so uh, if you want to point a shotgun at me, you're going to get whatever fuck's coming, right? Right. Anyways, uh, this girl, she... <laughs> Man, I'd be in the bar, I'd head to the pisser to go for a piss. This girl would come with me, she'd go in the can, she'd be standing there holding my dick while I pissed. It's funniest fucking thing. The looks on some of the guys' faces that would come in there. Anyways, it's a kind of jokester she was. But she was crazy. Fuck, especially when she was drinking, man. We are in the bar one night, and she's arguing with a buddy of mine. I kept telling him, hey, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. And he wouldn't shut up. Next thing, she fucking threw the table right on top of him and jumped him and fucking plummeled the <laughs> Sucker, but he didn't listen. I told him to shut up. Um, one night with her, and we're in the bar, and she got in an argument. These three guys at the fucking table for some reason. I don't know why. Anyways, we ended up jumping up, me and her. Three guys jump up on the table. She looks at me and she goes, "Fuck you! I'm taking two this time." <laughs> the two of them, the three of them sat back down. Anyways, hitchhikers in a naked weekend. <laughs> uh, me and my cousin were coming out of Grand Prairie heading to Vancouver we're rolling through this little town in the Fraser Canyon Yale a couple girls hitchhiking on the side of the road nice you know white girl and native girl fuck so of course I stopped and picked them up well the white girl wasn't too bad looking the native girl was just gorgeous just gorgeous girl Anyways, they're going to Vancouver. This is a Friday. They're going to Vancouver for a, be at family court or something on Monday. So, of course, we invite them to stay at my cousin's apartment with us for the weekend, of course. Well, we're out partying that night. And, of course, Dan ends up with the pretty princess. And my cousin's got this white girl in the morning. I, we're up. My cousin calls me over. He says, Dan, Dan, come here and look at us. I'm about to walk over. He opens his house, but out oh, goes his pecker. Looked like a fucking red, like a bra hamburger. I was like, what the fuck, man? He says, the broad's fucking crazy. I guess it turned out this broad was a fucking nymphomaniac. I guess that's why her, name, her nickname was BJ. <laughs> Anyways, we were selling drugs out of that fucking apartment and shit. Um... Of course the second night I had to have the nimple because I gotta try this out. But anyways. And uh we had a buddy of ours from Yugoslavia. He got deported eventually, he went fucking nuts here. And uh he was walking around with nothing on but <laughs> everybody was naked, but he had on a fucking overcoat and a tie and a pair of socks. <laughs> this young kid come knocking on the door to buy some fucking weed and Joe answers the door. That poor little kid, I didn't know what the fuck was gonna happen to him. Anyways, it was a good fucking weekend. We had a hell of a good time. Now, <laughs> you're it. <laughs> I was up in Merritt, and I'm sure you've heard me mention it before, maybe on Savannah's channel, but I was up there building native housing. I was staying in a hotel. I was down the street at a bar one night with a couple I knew, and I was sitting in there drinking a couple tables away with a group of girls, four girls sitting there. One girl, this cute little blonde, she she was missing her foot. And I thought, there's got to be some kind of interesting fucking story. Well, I ended up over the table sitting there with these girls and talking to her. Well, apparently, I guess she was using a shotgun as a crutch and blew her foot off. <laughs> you can use a shotgun as a crutch and I'll fucking make sure it's unloaded, I would say. But anyway, so as the evening went on... And the girl with one foot and this other girl, they started arguing about who was going to take me home. Well, nobody was taking me fucking home anyways, but whatever, let them have their fun. I don't give a fuck, right? Well, 
seeing as the girl's one foot couldn't fight, the girl she was arguing with had gotten a fucking argument with their blonde one-footer's best friend. So they started fighting. I had, to, I had to pick this little blonde up off the floor fucking twice. She was crawling to get in the fucking fight. I had to keep pulling her and sitting her on my lap to stop her. Anyways, these two girls, they roll right out the fucking front door. Well, I don't know if they're rolling, standing. They went out the front doors fighting anyways. That was probably a couple minutes later. And fucking two girls come back through the doors fighting. One of the original girls and a completely different fucking girl. How that happened, I have no fucking idea. Well... By this time, I had each girl by the, well, not by the throat, but I had a hold of each of them, one in each arm, spread them apart, and I'm yelling at the bartender. Where's the fucking bouncer? He yells back, you're it. <laughs> fucking cocksucker. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I had to get my blood going with some music this morning. I like my music loud enough that the neighbors throw rocks through the window so they can hear it better. <laughs> Anyways, Nick, check out Rebel Sun, one, two, three. You'll like it, my friend. Well, I guess my boy's out of prison on Friday. Basically told his lawyer, if you want to get paid, get me to fuck out or wait for two years to get paid. So I'm pretty sure he'll get out because his fucking lawyers want their fucking money, right? I mean, it's crazy. His lawyer's probably sitting down having fucking coffee or tea with the fucking prosecutor and the judge, for fuck's sakes, making their deals. That's how it works, boys. I have no fucking doubt about it. And I want to talk a little bit about the fucking marijuana shit that's happening here in Canada now. Legal, my fucking ass. Okay. One of the things the government put out in their little fucking fear shit that, uh, if you don't have a strain that's government approved, you're fucked. Well, listen, people, and think about it logically. First of all, how much does it cost to take a sample of marijuana and send it to a fucking lab to have it tested? I don't know. Is it a hundred bucks, five hundred bucks, thousand bucks? I don't fucking know. Well, think about it. Just think ten thousand people, and that's fuck all the percentage in Canada. Just think ten thousand people that got busted for that and they're gonna fucking uh test their weed well if it's a hundred dollars and it's ten thousand fucking people how much money is that and if it's five hundred or a thousand the government don't fucking work that way they're a corporation just like any fucking thing else right they work on profit and if there ain't no fucking money in it they ain't gonna do it they're just telling you people this to scare you for fuck's sakes think about it man and as far as the black market, I've been in this fucking weed business since 1974. And I'll tell you right now, I always said the black market will never end. Because they make too fucking much money off it. Okay? So before the day they legalize it here in Canada, there's fucking pot stores everywhere. The day it become legal, they closed all the fucking pot stores. Well, why? <laughs> to keep the black market fucking going. In the newspaper, they're advertising in, in fucking... You know, columns, whatever. $6.37 a gram on the street corner, or $10 and something a gram for the government. So where the fuck do you think they want their money to go, man? Come on, people. Think about it, for fuck's sakes. Anyways, uh, I ain't got much more to say today, man. It's just one of them fucking days. See, I didn't even shave yesterday. I got so fucking busy, I forgot. Mama still kissed me, though. <laughs> Well, you guys have a kick-ass day, and I, I got to get out of here. I'm so fucking busy today. I hope the fucking old haymaker's shining on all you guys, because if you can see, she's shining in, old, in the old studio pretty fucking good. Bye.